Hello and welcome to Mr Ridley's product design and this clip is about plastic processes and it is for AS and A2 product design exams. The main two types of plastics we're going to look at for these processes are thermoplastics. These can be melted and reshaped over and over again and these are easily recycled. The other type of plastics are thermosetting plastics. These have different properties, they cannot be reshaped over and over again and they reform their, um, they can, they retain their form even in extreme heat. And thermosetting plastics are more difficult to recycle. Many of the processes we are looking for at are for thermoplastics because these can be easily melted and shaped and also because they are easily recycled. So we'll look at some for thermoplastics. So the first one we're looking at is injection molding. This is used to make complex 3D shapes such as toys, electronic product, casings and kitchen equipment. The advantages of injection molding, complex forms can be produced, high volumes can be produced and the colour can be built in to the part. The disadvantage are moulds, the steel moulds are very expensive to manufacture so setup costs are very high and some very complex shapes and forms are impossible to manufacture. Injection moulding. Here's a simple um, diagram of injection moulding. In the exam you may be asked to uh, sketch a diagram like this and we'll just go through the stages. The stages are the plastic granules are fed into a hopper, the thermoplastic granules. The granules are heated and an Archimedean screw turns to drive the granules forward past these heaters. The heater turns the, um, the plastic granules into a molten state and then the hydraulic pump pushes forward and the molten plastic is injected into the uh, split steel mould. The plastic then cools and the item is ejected. So that is injection moulding. The advantages of injection moulding this um, strip down of a cordless chainsaw shows the webbing reinforcements here which strengthen the product um, and other details such as these locating tabs that can be added to injection molding parts which would be not be possible with other processes like vacuum forming. TPE over molding. TPE over molding can be applied to a wide range of products. Often in, it's used in a manufacturing process in conjunction or together with injection molding. So for example these these uh, razors here are injection molded and then the TPE is over molded. Um, the thermoplastic elastomer is over molded over the top to form uh, better products, more tactile and better looking products. This process involves a two shot injection molding process. The first shot uses the thermoplastic like ABS so here you've got an ABS case that's injection molded and then this put in a second slightly larger mold and the thermoplastic elastomer is injection injected in. Often there are little keys that key the two parts together to keep them together. The benefits of this process are improved ergonomics and in the case of power tools protection from vibration related injuries. So that's TPE over molding. Blow molding. This is used to make hollow objects such as bottles and containers. The advantage is it rapidly produces hollow objects with narrow necks like bottles and there are very high rates of production, so a very high mass production. Um, the disadvantage again setup costs, moulds are expensive, they're steel moulds, they have to be machined and they, they can only be used for relatively thin walled materials and the surface finish on the outside of the product is, it can, is never that good, it's a poor quality surface finish. Here are the steps with blow moulding. Again, it's, it's you might have to replicate or copy this, this drawing. And this is something you might have to draw in the exam. And a tube of heated and softened plastic, softened polymer called a parison is it, it extruded downwards. This comes down through here. The mould halves close, trapping and sealing the parison. Air is blown down, uh, causing it to expand against the edges of the mould. The mould cools. The po uh, cools the polymer, releasing it from the mould. The mould halves are open and the product is extracted. And there we can see a mould for a, a, a bottle. So that is blow moulding. Vacuum forming. 
Vacuum forming is used to shape thermoplastics such as acrylic, hips and PVC. It produces hollow shapes and it is ideal for batch production, though it can be automated at an, an increased up to really a mass production process. It produces accurate, consistent shapes. Uh, the process uses a mould. Here's a mould here. And the, the item is shaped by creating a vacuum underneath it. The advantage is low cost pro process. It's quick. The upper mould can add um, extra details such as logos and lettering. Deep moulds result in the... The, the stretched thin walls and limited to simple designs obviously often with a regular wall thickness. Vacuum forming is often used in schools to shape thermoplastic here it's being used to shape hips. Here's a diagram again this time showing vacuum forming and once more this is might you might have to cut this might be something they'd ask for in the exam a correctly shaped mould is placed in the vacuum former. The plastic is heated until it is soft. The uh, pump sucks air through holes in the bed. Atmospheric pressure pushes down on the, on the, the, the thermoplastic material. Um, the sheet is allowed to cool and then can be removed from the vacuum former. So here's, here's the stages in vacuum forming. And remember, with vacuum forming, a 10 degree release angle is, is necessary to allow the, 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 the actual forming to come out of the former so they're not locked together. Line bending. This is used to make simple shapes out of sheet polymer such as furniture and um, shop point of sale displays. Advantages is a very simple process and of, often requires only a simple jig such as a block of wood. Disadvantages is it can only really produce limited forms. Um, line bending, here's an illustration of a line, simple drawing of a line bending machine showing really the simple process and here I've shown the process in the form of a flow diagram. Now this is sometimes used, not so much often they'll want you to write it down but um, it, there's a start, the thermoplastic is held above a hot strip heating element, you wait while the plastic softens, bend the plastic on a former um, allow to cool and harden finish. It's a simple process. Compression moulding. Now compression moulding is for thermo used for thermo setting plastics and the charge which is generally a, a sort of um, paste of therm uh, thermo setting plastic material is placed into the mould and it, the mould closes and pressure is applied to force it into all areas, to force it into the correct shape. Then heat and pressure are maintained until the moulding material has cured. So the moulding material actually cures and in technical terms the long chain polymers cross link and it becomes a solid item. Compression moulding differs from injection moulding in that generally it is used for the moulding of thermosets. It is also different in the mould is heated to form the part rather than cooled to solidify it. So that's something just bear with. Don't get these two confused because they're quite a similar. There are, there are similarities in the process. Rotational moulding. This process is used to manufacture larger plastic products. It produces a thicker walled hollow product. It's often used to make um, products such as uh, this watercraft here is made from rotational moulding and um, this large mould here is a large rotational mould is making water tanks, large water tanks. The polymers typically, typically used in this process are uh, LDPE and HDPE. That is rotational moulding. Here is the diagram for rotational moulding. This is quite a tricky one to draw but the basic steps are the polymer powder is added to the mould the mould is closed over and heated and rotated about two axes. Now this is important. This means that it's tumbled over and over, which distributes the powder around the outside of the mould. And, and the, the tumbling makes sure that the powder is distributed evenly. The mould is then cooled and it continues to rotate while cooling. Once the mould is cooled, um, the product is removed from the mould and the process can start again. So that is rotational moulding. 3D printing. 3D printing, um, the printer is a 3D printer and the printer layers up plastic to form a solid object. It melts the plastic filament 
a, uh, in, a, in a head here. The plastic filament is, is fed through and builds it up layer after layer. Um, it's, it builds the product from the bottom up until you have an object ready to move, ready to use. So 3D printing is a process that uses CAD, computer aided design and CAM. So here we've got a kind of uh, step by step here. There's an idea, it's drawn, it's drawn on, a, on software, for example, Google SketchUp, the product is drawn. Um, it then goes into the 3D printer software. The 3D printer software takes the 3D drawing from the CAD and um, divides it up into slice layers, which the printer can then read and produce. The uh, product can then be made from ABS or PLA. PLA, remember, is a biopolymer. So 3D printing is important because it uses CAD and it is also a CAM process. That's 3D printing. Here's another illustration of 3D printing. So you've got the reel here. It's fed through to a head and this builds up layer by layer here in this close up. You can see so it's the plastic is fed from a reel to heated nozzle. The nozzle lays a bead of plastic each time it lays a bead and the bed drops down and then another one and another one until the product's finished. So that is 3D printing. Well, thank you for watching Mr. Ridley's product design and good luck in the exam.